there's a lot of people who don't like that silence when the interviewers just stare at you and you feel the need to fill that silence. It's better to be ready than to get ready. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums, meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Pilots, I have great news. On April 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to be doing another live webinar, but this time it is with the new director of pilot hiring at American Airlines, Miss Dina Payne Smith. You get a chance to be one of the very first people to ask her the questions that are on your mind. Check in the show notes. I'll have a link so you can sign up to join us. I can't wait for this. It's going to be a lot of fun. April 10th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Sign up in the show notes and join me and get your questions answered. Hey, pilot, another episode of Ready for Pushback is here. You found Nick Fialka. You found the show. I appreciate you tuning in. If it's your first time, welcome aboard. We are happy to have you, and I love that you're listening. Today's conversation is with a listener, with another pilot who reached out to me on LinkedIn, and her name was Bree. She reached out, wrote me a message, and we decided to go ahead and swing the bat and do a coaching call. I love a coaching call. I really think that it's informative and helpful, and there are a lot of different things that pilots are concerned with, and you don't have to go pay thousands of dollars to somebody else to give you hot takes and stuff like that. You can reach out, and we'll chat about it, and we'll chew on it, and we'll talk about a pragmatic way to come up with an answer, and Bree was uh, awesome and helpful. You might hear me with a little bit of a growl in the episode because I had a cold, (laughs) but I keep recording. I always try to make sure that I have great interviewer, interviewees, and I try to just not worry about whether or not I'm sick because it's more important to get the information across. So let's sit back, relax, and let's get ready for pushback. Hey, pilot, did you just get a new conditional job offer? Are you getting out of the military and going to move your family across the country? Are you going to move in base somewhere or are you going to go out to find that second home that you've been looking for? Well, I want you to stop right now, pick up the phone and call Marty and the team at Trident Home Loans. It's an organization that's run by pilots. They understand pilot pay. They understand contracts. They understand military. They have the best VA loans in the United States. Marty and his team have been doing mortgages for years. They've been doing my mortgages for years. I trust him and his team more than any other organization. I challenge you to get a better deal anywhere else. Go ahead, reach out, get a mortgage quote, and then call Marty and his team. They will walk you through the process and show you how competitive their rates are. So go right now, tridenthomeloans.com and check them out. All right, Bree, welcome to the episode. How are you? I'm doing great this evening. How are you? I'm good. We're on ready for pushback. I'm stoked you're here. So Bree is a good sport because she sent me a message on LinkedIn and had a couple questions and I said, Hey, would you mind if maybe we recorded tomorrow night and we catch it on the podcast? And she reluctantly and graciously and very kindly agreed. So thank you for your generosity, Brie. Absolutely. If my questions being answered helps anybody else who's in even a remotely similar boat, I am more than happy to have this recorded and put out there and put myself out there for other people. Yeah, absolutely. Mockery and all. No, mockery. Come on. (laughs) Tough crowd, tough crowd. The only people making fun of me, so don't even worry about it. All right. So I don't know what we're talking about. So will you tell me and tell the pilot listening kind of just where are you? We're going to kind of go through a coaching call. We'll chew on the ideas and kind of come up with some kind of way forward. Yeah. So... I knew that I needed some interview prep help. Historically, I know that I don't interview very well and had that in the back of my mind and expected it. But then when we started to get into like the questions of 
why this airline, why that airline? Tell us about a time being empathetic and being uniquely you while editing out the parts that might not be so great. <laughs> That's so good. So coming across how you want to be perceived and how you are because and being authentic to yourself while putting your best professional face forward and not stumbling all over your words. That's something that I definitely need help with. I tend to speak first before my thoughts are all collected and then I end up rambling. I know there's a lot of people who don't like that silence when the interviewers just stare at you and you feel the need to fill that silence. That's me as well. So that's definitely something else I need help with. And then it was also just the questions of, I'm currently an active helicopter pilot. I've got 2,600 hours and I'm looking at just quitting my job entirely and knocking out my ratings for fixed wing as fast as I possibly can and getting to an airline as quickly as I can. So I'm wanting help with the timeline of when should I start interview prep? When should I start the coaching that I'm going to so desperately need? And so that's where I'm coming to you for all that advice and your sage wisdom. I love your voices. They are so fun. <laughs> okay. So you are concerned about being able to articulate yourself, being able to understand your why and how it aligns with the company's why and how you can be a good cultural fit for them. Correct. Yes. And how to understand that. You're concerned about how to craft a tell me about a time story without sounding like a maniac, like somebody that just, you definitely don't want to hire this person. Yeah. That was my experience. Keep the freak flag is there. Let it poke out a little bit. Retreat just a little bit. Be like, hi, and then bring it back. They so. know the freak flag is on you because it says helicopter <laughs> pilot. Every helicopter pilot has That's a little fair. something, a little something. <laughs> it's just this like lack of fear of death empathy and your unique self. I love that. The fact that you have the self-awareness to know that you should be able to articulate yourself like that is already a huge sign that you are going to be really, really good at this. Awkward silence. When they just like stare into your soul and kind of make you question like you're doing right now. Nobody can see it, but he's doing it to me right now. So I'm just going to drink some water. <laughs> That's right. Walk away. Walk away. That's right. But <laughs> being able to be comfortable in your own skin with who you are, especially as a woman in the aviation industry, you already have a lot of barriers that you've broken down and you have to be tough and in front. And now you have to be in that position as a person that's being examined, right? Some they're basically their eyes are on you examining you and they're deciding mm -hmm. whether they like you, whether you're nice and going to be a good fit and judging. They're judging you, right? <laughs> That's so good. So it's kind of a lot of different things because really the first thing we talk about right now is the last thing that you brought up. And the fact that you have 2,600 hours and you think about, maybe I just want to quit my job and knock everything else out right now and just start going down that path. So you're currently a helicopter pilot in a civilian job. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay. And I'm living in Belize, so there is no fixed wing training down here. So I would have to back to the U.S., Wow. And okay. So you are in Belize yeah. flying helicopters. Are you doing like oil platform stuff? No. So we do a lot of tourist, ah. like we do tours. I've seen the blue hole more times than I care to count at this point. Uh, <laughs> do a lot of tours. We do a lot of island transfers. So we pick people up at the airport, take them out to private islands. It's really fun because I get to meet people from all different walks of life. I get to meet everybody under the sun, all ages, people from all over the world and get to share different and unique experiences with them. And I, I enjoy that a lot. You are 2,600 hours. Uh, I'm guessing you're likely prior military. No, you got 2,600 helicopter nope. hours on your own without like, wow, that's so much work. I'll buy my onesie. And that's so much yep. money. Okay. So after flight instruction, I've been getting paid to build those hours. So good. Wow. It's a lot of time, but it's taken me a lot of time. Absolutely. I know there's a lot of pilots out there with a whole lot more than 2,600 hours. And they're like 2,600. That's a lot of helicopter hours, young lady. That's not much. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I'm tracking. Okay. So what quals do you have? What fixed wing quals do you have right now? Uh, 14 hours. 14 hours. You have a private yeah. pilot's license? No. no. I started it back in 2020. And then right about before my solo flight, my school shut down for COVID. Oh, gosh. And then more life got in the way. I ended up moving from California to Missouri and just never picked it back up. And then from Missouri came down to Belize. And now I'm like, all right, let's do this. Okay. So let's say you were going to cut bait and just get it all. Would you go to one of the schools that's going to put you through a, a rigorous course that'll get you to um, all the quals you need to be able to pick up your ATP? Is that Would that be the plan? I don't know if I would be doing like one of those programs or if it would be because I looked at Coast Aviation in San Diego mm -hmm. and I'm currently on their wait list. They're extremely inundated there with people wanting to do the same thing. Yep. And they've got a wait list. So I'm thinking that my best, quickest and most economic way might just be finding a flight school with airplanes that I want to fly and that I'm past the checks of what I'm looking for in planes and in schools and that has an instructor that can devote the time to me that I need yeah. um, because I'm wanting to do it like a full-time job. I don't want to be like, oh, well, I'll train on Tuesdays and Thursdays for four hours. I want Monday through Saturday, two flights a day with ground school in the middle type yeah. of thing and just bang it out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's definitely a smart way. Have you talked to anybody like Frontier or doing an RTP, like a rotor transition program? I haven't. I'm still in like the preliminary gathering information. I'm looking at the Frontier Cadet program and currently haven't met anybody who has personal experience with that. So that was another question. If anybody's out there listening who has experience with that, if you want to get in touch, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure we can get you linked up with somebody there. And the rotor transition programs, typically they're built for people coming out of the military, but and that's you are, a wall I'm running into with a lot. Is it preventing you from actually like, is this like, Hey, this is a veteran only thing Got yes. it? because they want them yes. to use the GI bill and all yeah. that. They want the people who are previous military only. And so that is a another roadblock. So I'm sure. having to get creative in other ways to try to find a way to do this. Yeah. So are you looking just at coast? Are you looking at places around the US? You look at like, you know, Florida has 10,000 schools. And so Florida is actually where I'm wanting to end up. My mom and my sister both live in Florida. And so that's, that's kind of what, what's driving all of this as well is I'm Tired of being, like I was saying, tired of just being me and the cats and a dog and ready to be back by my family again. Yeah, I think that... So, Florida is uh, kind of where I'm hoping to end up. I think that you would have really good luck looking at the schools in Florida, doing kind of a general search because do you need to get a degree or anything? You're just ready to kind of fly and, and knock things out. Yeah, I just knock out flight school. I don't have a degree or anything like that. So you don't if in it. my spare time later, I can build on um, build into that. That's cool. But yeah, right now I just kind of I just want to get into the airline. Really? Okay. So you'll need a private, you need your commercial multi and you need instrument. an instrument and that's it. I mean, that should be relatively yep. quick to knock out. You should be able to get yeah. that pretty quick. Yeah, I think you're in a unique situation because a lot of people are starting from either zero or coming out of the military. And you are a very mm -hmm. cool unicorn of a person. And have you talked to uh, like General Aviation? Have you talked to them in Texas? They're in Fort Worth. Mm -mm. That would be a good one to, to consider. I can link you up with them. I know people over there. And okay, cool. probably Sanders Aviation as well might be a good call. We love, love, love Sanders. It's probably probably my favorite flight school in America. And they're Navy pilots, so I love them. And they really give back to the aviation community. So they are in Alabama, and it's a, a quality, quality program. So, yeah, I think what I would do this week, over the next seven days, we're recording in the middle of the week, so I would go and reach out to at least 10 different flight schools and talk to them and okay. let, let them know, Hey, I'm a helicopter girl that I got 2,600 hours. I want to get my quals. I'd love as fast as possible. Are you going to be paying cash? Or are you going to be putting it on your parents' yep. credit card? Okay, cool. 
I mean, it makes it easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was putting it on my parents' credit card, but um, the original flight school was assisted enough by them that I think they would squawk about this one. That's so. right. I'm waiting to squawk about all Thanks, my mom. kids. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, mom. But yeah, I would say this week, reach out to find 10. We've already talked about, I think, three or four. And mm -hmm. do a little bit of online research without going. I always tell people to stay away from the forums because they're so filled with trash and vitriol and this, that, and the other. It is. The truth of the matter is if people are getting quals and what is their success rate, if they don't have some maniac fed that's in there failing everybody and they're just taking people's money because that's not good for anybody, right? So if you've got an organization that's a well-known one, that's a stand-up one, and I mean, it should be easy to find 10 and find out what their wait list is and tell them you're ready. You can leave on it the drop of a dime. Just throw everybody, all those animals in a suitcase and go. <laughs> Put them in the shipping container. Off we go. So that's right. Lord have mercy. <laughs> hey, pilot. Did you just get a new conditional job offer? Are you getting out of the military and going to move your family across the country? Are you going to move in base somewhere? Or are you going to go out to find that second home that you've been looking for? Well, I want you to stop right now, pick up the phone, and call Marty and the team at Trident Home Loans. It's an organization that's run by pilots. They understand pilot pay. They understand contracts. They understand military. They have the best VA loans in the United States. Marty and his team have been doing mortgages for years. They've been doing my mortgages for years. I trust him and his team more than any other organization. I challenge you to get a better deal anywhere else. Go ahead, reach out, get a mortgage quote, and then call Marty and his team. They will walk you through the process and show you how competitive their rates are. So go right now, tridenthomeloans.com and check them out. So that's kind of the first part. And I'll tell you the second part is the second part about like, how do I be a good interviewee, right? Like, when do I get ready? Well, it's better to be ready than to get ready. Okay. So if you are pushing, if you're filling out applications, you should already be be able to articulate yourself and be confident in that because oftentimes you are, like I said, a unicorn, like there are not many female pilots and there are not many female pilots with that many hours. So you are going to be a big time shoe in, even though you're low on fixed wing time and at 14 hours, you will be, as you start building those fixed wing hours, everybody's going to kind of jump on top of everybody else to try to get you to come to their company. Okay. So everybody wants you. You just got to knock this time mm -hmm. out and get it going. And as you are getting close to that mark, I would consider jumping into interview prep. Okay. Because the first off, the application is hell on earth. Building the application is the worst part of this entire job. From, from the time of your first flight until you <coughs> retire at 65, the worst thing you're going to do is fill out that That's application. What I've been told. It just takes so much. Man, it sucks. But I'll tell you that, like, give yourself plenty of time. Make sure you're like, now's your chance to like work on yourself. Make sure your logbooks are oh, in I order. Oh, I do have a question about logbooks Make sure too. Look, look, so I have stopped okay. with the paper logbook and I am using an Excel sheet. Are they okay yeah. with that? Or do I need to take every line from that Excel sheet and write it into that paper logbook again to make it look pretty? So there's a couple different ways to do it. There are companies that will do it for you and you give them a couple hundred bucks and they will convert it over. Whether a straight up spreadsheet, I don't know about formatting stuff like that, but I would, Anytime Logbooks is a company that comes to mind. The guy's name is Stuff Stufflebean that owns it, good dude. And they do that. Log10 Pro may have a function where you can upload. Maybe you can organize the cells in a matter that you can upload. I'm talking completely out of the blue. I don't know if they okay. do that or not. I've never used them. But if I owned an IT company, I would certainly make it easy for people to join my company. So those are two things. Somebody else out there. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if I'll ask people also to post on our Facebook page and our Instagram, if you've got a good idea for that, that question usually comes from military people because the civilians usually go through the whole, I've got this paper log book thing and I've been doing it. And then I'm really cool and lean forward and switched over to the internet world. And I use log 10 pro or something like that. So the way to be old school. 
I'm so paranoid of an app crashing though, or stop being supported by whoever's making it. And then you're like, oh, well, that's 15 years of my life in logbooks that's gone. So. Yeah. So a couple things with that. You could certainly, like Cordine owns Log10. That's a company that it's going to be around. It seems from the outside okay. that it's a great company and that it's got all those financials in order. So let's say you did that and then you were paranoid. You could once a quarter just print everything out and then have the paper copy and then have the yeah. digital copy because everything, once you get into the digital realm, everything becomes so much easier. It's just so much better. And then you get to go on Instagram and post the picture every year of all the different places you flew and all those little lines zipping across. Oh, that's how that originates. I was wondering at the yeah. beginning of January, I was seeing all those and I was like, oh, I want to play, but oh, I'm a helicopter pilot. So it would just be like, bloop, done. <laughs> I know, just one dark blue spot. Yeah, pretty much. It'd be like, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I had my four year old draw a picture of the United States. And then I had my three year old come in and draw lines across the United States. And that was pretty much relatively what I did last year. So you're like, Oh, I can play too. <laughs> that's right. I feel like that's an app for you. That's right. It'd be so good. I would tell you that you need to make sure your logbooks in order. And the longer you wait, okay. the more of a pain it's going to be and the more complex it's going to be. So right now, when it's just helicopter stuff, get ahead of it and switch into the digital age okay. and do all your like fixed wing stuff into that world because it just makes it easier when it's time to play. When it's time to show up, it just makes it easier. So get your logbooks in order, get your paperwork in order. Make sure your passport's not going to expire soon. That's a good thing to always think about. Do you have a class one medical or you do a class two? No, I'm a helicopter ATP. So I keep a class one just because I knew that I always wanted to get into the airline side of things. So I was like, well, let's make sure before I set my heart on that, that I can actually achieve that class one medical. So I held a class one for a lot of years now. Good. That's awesome. Yeah, that's always a big terrifying thing when people are going up for the class one for the first time. They're like, oh yeah. man, please don't let something weird happen. I know. I'm like... They wanted to do, I'm not quite at the point to get the first EKG, but I'm getting close. And they're like, oh, well, we're thinking about doing this year. I was like, no, no, you don't put that on me yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> that's right. Not till you have to. And it's such a racket anyway, I'll tell you. Yeah. But hey, that's neither here nor there. So, okay, you're getting your paperwork in order. You're contacting these schools. And now you can, let's say five to six months out from being to that place where you are going to be a full up round that's hireable by whatever your first airline is going to be, whether it's going to be a regional or ULCC or whatever, I would consider that's when you start building your applications and you find that time to dedicate to get through the heavy lifting because okay. it's hard to remember your speeding tickets. Every year you get older, it's harder to remember. It's hard to remember. Yeah, it can be hard to remember a failure or two or this and that or where did I live during... Oh, zero failures. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's far. Go fail, <laughs> well, go fail something so you can get hired. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, they're too good. <laughs> and I did have somebody ask me that in an interview. And they were like, have you ever had any training failures? And I go, no. And they looked, they're like, never? No training failures? I was like, nope. And I'm going to knock on wood right now because... <laughs> Desperately, knock on wood. So the next time somebody asks you if you've had any training failures, I would like you, instead of just saying no, I would like you to say, I've been really, really fortunate throughout my flying career that I have been able to succeed even in high pressure situations. And I know there are a lot of times where I thought that maybe I wasn't good enough, but I've been able to be true to myself. And I'm very excited to say that I don't have any failures. See, that... And this is why I'm going to be hiring Spitfire when the time's right, because now turned into that beautifully articulated, you should hire me fabulous statement right there. Well, it's just pointing the question back what that company thinks is important, right? Every question is judging whether or not you fit in their organization. So every answer should be crafted in a story that articulates your why mm -hmm. and the company's why intermingles them together, right? And it's tricky and it takes a lot of self-awareness. And frankly, women are better at it than men. By God, not today. by a long shot. 
that's good. And my military brothers that are coming through, they're just robotic about it. And that is exactly how I was. And it took a lot of beating before I was able to just lay it out there. So long story is, I think that when you're starting to get your applications ready, like if you're going to go do the right way and do Spitfire, for sure, do both of the products at once and get the application review and start the academic. So because the academic It's not just diving in and learning how to be an interviewee. If you walk into a baseball game and everybody else is playing football, like you're never going to succeed. So you need to know what the rules are. You need to know how you score points and you need to know who's on the other side. And so that's the academic portion of gaining that knowledge. And the way we look at it is a sports model, professional sports model. And so you train watching film first. Then you get out there and you practice reps. You do scrimmages. You work with each other. You make yourself better. And then you have this final big time scrimmage right before the big game where you go one-on-one with the hardest guy. You succeed with that. And then you go to the championship and you crush because you've been practicing so hard. And so if you give yourself enough time to practice, you will be amazingly comfortable in the interview. And that's worth every penny that you could pay that you've ever made in your life. Because being nervous in the interview, sweating, getting anxious, little shakes, little... Clammy handshakes. Clammy handshakes. <laughs> Thinking about that. And then you've got to go to the bathroom at the same time. And they're asking you a question about your logbook because it was an Excel spreadsheet. And you're like, oh, shit, I should have done it digitally. <laughs> like, you don't want to be there, right? Handing him a stack of papers and some sticky notes. And you're like, here's my logbook, guys. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh, that's my gum right there. Let me put that back in my mouth. <laughs> but, <laughs> but right, this is, we're going to be good friends. This is awesome. I love this. I think, does that make sense, right? Yeah. So prepare your paperwork as you're preparing yourself, right? And if you can do that, the good part is like, there's no time limit on, you have to do it within these six weeks. Like it's however long you want. I go back. I was a Spitfire client two years ago-ish when I started. I was a client and I still go back into my academics and I watch them and I listen to what it's Bill and Tron talking about different stuff. And, mm-hmm. and I understand it deeper now because I've seen it. I live it and I talk to it every day. But that is, I would take it with me on my runs. I would listen to it while I'm running and do workouts and stuff. Oh, I was listening to your podcast at the gym today. So... <laughs> Good, good. I hope I didn't sound like a dude because you're like, skip, <laughs> thumbs down. Nope, I'll get to the ratings as well as leaving my uh, favorite helicopter in the comments so that it's factored into the algorithm. Yes, that's so important to the algorithm, man. But I make the podcast about 20 to 40 minutes because that's about what a workout is. And so in the daily, like the solo episodes are 8 to 15-ish minutes because... It's the end of the week and you don't have much time. So just nice, quick little refresher and keep moving. Hey, pilot. Does your pilot uniform make a short flight feel like a transcon slog? Flight uniforms have reinvented aviation shirts. With 3D stretch, stain repellents, and no wrinkles, these shirts are just plain comfortable and ready for takeoff right out of your rollerboard. Flight Uniform is trusted by more than 25,000 pilots and their flagship flight shirt has over 1,500 five-star reviews. I've worn every pilot shirt out there and if you know me, you know I only wear flight uniforms. Be the envy of every cockpit at flightuniform.com and get a special podcast exclusive discount with the code SPITFIREPOD20 to take 20% off your first order. That's SPITFIREPOD20, all one word, for 20% off your first order at flightuniform.com. So I think that, does that answer the first kind of couple questions about all of that? Yeah, like, so for me, I'm hoping to get through the training within like five to six months. So it's kind of going to be a concurrent when I'm starting flight school, we're going to be starting applications and interview prepping and that kind of stuff is kind of what I'm thinking. Just get it having everything in order. I would say your number one focus is making sure you keep that zero on your failure list. So feel it out, go in there doing nothing else, but like do the job at hand first. Okay. And once you start getting good at the job, once it starts getting easier, 
that's when I want you to consider the applications. And that's when I want you to consider, because I don't like, if it's six months, like you need to crush flying first. And if we need to work one-on-one and get you ready, 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 and like burn the midnight oil, like, okay, do we want to do that? Hell no, we don't want to do that. (laughs) But if I'm like, I have an interview in it in three days. I've done it. (laughs) I had a girl come up to me who had an hour to get ready for an interview and she had done zero prep. And we crushed it so hard. And she was like, she was almost crying leaving and she was pregnant, which was amazing. And she crushed it. She got her job. So at a major airline, it was amazing. So do we want to do that? No, 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 no. There's so much stress. It's not worth it. It is not worth the years it takes off your life to just be so worried about it. And then if you swing and you miss, you'll never forget it. And that's what we don't want. We want 100% guaranteed success. And that's how you do it. You just give yourself enough time. So pace yourself, get really good at flying, get some quals, find out who's cool and who's not. Mm -hmm. Learn some stuff. You may be applying for a different job, like a different company than you were thinking by the time you're done with it. Stick with me and my team will advocate for you however we can to get you into the position where you want to be. All right. So that's going to be quick. Really, you just got to get calling some flight schools and get moving. Yeah. Have you already told your boss you're leaving? Yep. Yeah. If I hadn't, I'd be like, can we wait a few weeks before this podcast gets launched, please? (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. Surprise! (laughs) This episode will be launched well after you're already halfway through flight school. All right. So cool. We have a lot of banked episodes, and I do this because when a really cool one comes up, I try to grab it so that we can have that conversation. So, yeah, don't worry. You have plenty of time. You might even be at your major airline by the time this comes out. No, <laughs> probably not. It's a lot of faith in me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> You're going to be great. You're going to be great. All right, what else? I think that kind of covered everything that I sent in that original email. Was Yeah. It was mostly just needing timing and working on the interview prep and authenticity and how to craft all those answers. But I think that'll come when the interview all the interview prep starts. And in the webinar that you put on the other night, somebody had mentioned that you recommended a notebook, like keeping a notebook of stories. Yeah, I have a notebook now. So like anytime something pops into my head, I'm like, oh, oh. And then I like pull it out. I'm like, okay. And then I write that story down. Yeah. Like listening to the podcast today, I'm like at the gym and I'm like, ah, and like pull my phone out. I'm like, start furiously typing something like lightning thumbs, typing out a story of, okay, I just, I just remembered this. So this is like a demonstration of empathy, not just words, but like the demonstration and putting it into practice for empathy and not just being like, I'm a real empathetic person. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, those lightning bolts that hit you when I would carry my little notebook around in my flight bag when I was flying and all over, like this is the notebook. And I would just write stuff in it. I would write, 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 write. And then if I didn't have it, I have an iPhone because I'm cool. And but it was like an iPhone five, are you? so I'm not. But that are cool. you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right there, it's an iPhone five. Wah, wah. I know that's I, okay. I, yeah. Mine's eleven. <laughs> I have too many people to provide for to get a new phone. Priorities. Yeah, but the notes, the notes function. That's how I track my podcast stuff. If somebody gives me a solo episode idea, boom, I put it in the notes, and I always have that to be able to pull off of with the notebook. It gives me that visual representation without having to scroll around. It's much easier for me to turn a page mm-hmm. than it is for me to use notes. And doing that, yeah, yeah, it's so difficult to scroll and like look for a keyword when it's written in your handwriting. For some reason, your brain knows where to look to pull out that word. And like, there it is. Yeah, this is what I want to write about. And then I maybe have like one of those pens with blue and red and green ink, and you just you can do different stuff and get kind of creative. And are we ordering like are we ordering notebook. Disney ones from the Disney store too? Because that's where all mine came from as a child was the Disney store. You're going to Florida. You might as well. Yes. That's going to be perfect. <laughs> But really, those ways to capture that are really important. And for the pilot that's listening here, if you don't already have a notebook, like a solid, like buy a sweet, sweet notebook, like go to a stationery store, go to some kind of nice place and get yourself something fancy. Mine's leather bound and has a little red, red paint on the edges of the paper. Get something nice, man. Treat yourself. This is going to be this. Mine has what's this job worth? 
perfect. <laughs> Anime, Thank, again, all those thanks, things. Thanks, Mom. No, just like actual yeah. like whiskers on the front, like cat ears on the cover, because one of my Christmas presents for my mom this year. That's so good. I highly recommend leave that in your bag when you interview. <laughs> just pull it out. It's got a little bookmark tab, yeah. gold around the edges, and it's got a little gold pin in the spine of it. Just pull that out. Little cat yeah. ears going. Perfect. Gosh, my daughters would love that. <laughs> Might get a few raised eyebrows at the interview. That's all right. You'll crush. You'll be great. (laughs) All right. Well, Bree, if you don't have any other questions, I'm really glad that you reached out. I'm really glad you asked me a hard question on LinkedIn so I couldn't just type a quick answer because I think this is an awesome conversation. So I think people will get a lot out of it. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate you responding and taking the time and having this conversation with me. It's given me a lot to chew on and think about and get a good good handle on where I'm starting and where I'm going and the direction. And yeah, thank you. This is the only late night podcast I have ever recorded. So I appreciate (laughs) you staying up late and I appreciate you just making it happen because I think that getting these answers quickly is an important thing and you're awesome. Thank you. I appreciate your time. This is important. Before you go, you need to know that 2024 is going to be unbelievably competitive in the world of pilot hiring. And you need to make sure that you separate yourself from the herd. The only way that you can guarantee that you'll land your dream job is by partnering with Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. We are the only choice for application review and interview prep. We are the partners that you've been looking for from start to finish, and it's never too early to be part of our community. Just go over to my website, spitfireelite.com, and use the coupon code R4P to save yourself 10% on all of our services. Again, that's the letter R, the number four, and the letter P to save 10%. So go out there and slay your interviews.